let us welcome our first speaker of the day, uh, Mr. G. Mooney from Oracle. Let's welcome him. section is really about 
uh, features that are in the product, the latest version of the product today that, that you could have. Um, and there's some of the things, mostly recent developments, things that we've delivered recently uh, that you may or may not be aware of. And then there's a section on some coming attractions, just a couple of things that uh, kind of more uh, detailed in nature about that we're working on uh, that will be coming out shortly. And then, of course, uh, some wrap-up items in Q&A. So, uh, before I start, um, I just wanted to mention that we, this year, earlier in the year, back in February, we completed the acquisition of a company called Modifier. Has anybody heard of Modifier? Yeah, okay. So they are a cloud-based WMS solution, that, um, what we view as the best in the industry. And they're now part of, and the reason that I'm bringing it up, Derek's going to go into it in more detail, just that they're part of the same development team. So the same team that does OTM, GTM, we're now, they've, we've folded that group. Uh, they've got a great, great team, great, kind of very uh, G-Log-like group of teams, just small, uh, focused on WMS, they do a great job, and they're now part of our team. So you'll be seeing some things in the future of tighter integration to WMS. Um, so if you have interest in that area and you pay attention to what Derek talks about, what, what, what's coming, um, but also you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really strong product. So on to um, Transportation Global Trade, our release update. So. It, for um, those of you who don't know, we do have a cloud offering now. Um, is there anybody in the room using our SaaS cloud solution today? Besides, no? Yes? Okay. Uh, so if you haven't, you've probably been contacted by our salespeople to, to use it. They like to, uh, they like to sell our cloud solution. But it, it's a very strong solution. Um, and. Uh, where we are now, uh, we introduced it. Uh, you see kind of some of the timeline of G-Log and the Oracle acquisition. But another key point on that timeline is in 2014, we started selling cloud. We started deploying it in early 2015. So it's been uh, almost three years since we've uh, started deploying the cloud. And in that time, greater than uh, now, we're at the point, 90% is kind of generous, I'd say 95% of all of our new customers, or maybe even higher, uh, go cloud. So we rarely sell an on-premise license anymore. We do sell, and what we do sell, we're selling to existing customers as more of an upsell. They're buying more fun, they're buying more, they're buying a product option on-premise. But just about every deal we do nowadays is a cloud deal. And it's because of the, the economics of it. You know, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's a, it's a, a better, better, total cost of ownership, and the way it's run. I mean, it's run, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that, but just the way that we run the cloud puts all the responsibility on Oracle to, to make it work. So anyway, uh, just providing that because the next section is going to go into uh, on-premise versus cloud. So uh, just as, as a little pointer, when I'm doing these slides, if there's a, if there's a building like this tall building on the right hand, si uh, yeah, right hand side of the slide, that means it's on-premise. And if there's a cloud, that means it's up in the cloud. So this is an on-premise slide. So it's telling you what our releases have been and what's coming. So those of you on 6.3, 6.3.7 is the latest release. Um, that was released back in June. And 6.4 uh, shortly thereafter came out. Uh, and then We've had a number of 6.4 roll-ups, uh, one and two. Two is the latest that you could be on. So the latest on-premise release you could be on is 6.4.2. And what's coming shortly is 6.4.3. So I have less than a year because that's what I'm allowed to put on there, that it's less than a year. But it is, um, it's in its final stages from a from development standpoint. So you should should be seeing it um, you know, within weeks or or uh, maybe a little bit, weeks or a month or so. Now to, uh, to cloud. So in the cloud, when we first released cloud, the version that we used to launch it was 6.3.4, and that was back in 2015. And then in 2016, we upgraded 
all of the customers to 641. So we took care of that upgrade, moved them all the way up from 634 to 641. And this year, we've moved everybody to 642. 642 came out on premise last year at the end of 2016. And so in 2017, we upgraded all of our cloud customers to that. Now, the part that changes, and I'll be talking about this uh, in the next couple slides, is that in 2018, we moved to a new naming convention and we moved to a new releasing approach on the cloud. So our naming convention is going to be year and release. And the release is just an ABCD. So it'll be 18A, 18B, 18C, and so on. And then when 2019 comes out, it'll be 19, ABCD. So it's just more to be consistent. All the Oracle cloud uh, apps, you'll see this, they're, they're going this path. So it's more to be consistent with, with Oracle and also make it pretty clear what the version you want. Um, but we're going to be shifting as well to um, more things coming in the cloud first. They used to come on premise. Now they're going to be coming in the cloud first and then later collect them up and deliver them on premise. Okay? So that's releases. That's the difference between on premise and cloud releases and number. Uh, from a roll-ups perspective, now we're back to on-premise. See the building there? We're back on-premise. Uh, 643, which is a release that's coming very shortly, um, will likely be the last roll-up for 64. 64, uh, I'll, I'll talk about some of the support timing, but that's the last roll-up. So the, we've had the 641, 642, 643, so we've had kind of two plus years, uh, two and a half years of delivering enhancements on top of 64. So now we're going to you know, let it go into kind of a support cycle. You should go to um, 643 if you're thinking, you know, again, on-premise, this is for on-premise customers. If you're thinking of uh, staying on 64 for a while, you should think about taking this 643 release because that's the roll-up you'll need to be on to get extended support if you want to go beyond, you know, hang out on 64 for a long time. Um, and if you're on 641, uh, patching is supposed to end very shortly, uh, but it, it, we've extended that another six months on top of. So when, when we release 643, which will be in the next very short time frame, 641 will be supported for another six months after that. So we'll get time to get to 643 if you want to. Um, and you know, for our on-premise customers, you know, not unlike cloud, we don't force an upgrade the only thing we can't do is we can't uh, patch old releases. So if you don't stay current, you can't get patches uh, from us. Uh, but but you can certainly stay on that release. And if you're and if you're not doing anything on the release, you're just running it every day. You're not doing implementations or rollouts. It's fine. Just hang out on it. So that's our on-premise rollups and where you are with six four. So is, are, do we have people on six four? Uh, Using our six, one of our six four releases today. Yeah. Okay. Well, when you get there, this will be fun. <laughs> so uh, now to cloud. So what we're doing with our our cloud um, currently, if you're in the cloud, what happens is we upgrade yearly. So when you're on six four six three four, we up every. A year later, we upgrade you to 641. A year later, we upgrade you to 642. Um, and that's our current approach. So people today are going in 642. And the way that upgrade works is we slot you for a time period between a couple of, between a period of like four or five months, we slot all of our customers for their upgrade. And then you can adjust it based on your implementation schedule or whatever. But that's, that's how we do it. We, we schedule that upgrade once a year. And then the quarterly patches, which give you all the security fixes, all the key bug fixes, they come every quarter at a regular time. We put them on the stage environment first, and two weeks later we put them on production. And so you stay current, automatically stay current with all uh, security fixes, all bug fixes. Um, we take care of applying those. Uh, the responsibility of the customers or the implementers is really just to test on the test environment to make sure, you know, regression-wise everything works the same. 
but it, uh, from our standpoint, looking at our cloud customers, very, very, very few regression issues with our quarterly patches. They, they just, you know, keep, keep working. So starting in uh, 2018, 642 will stay the same. So 642 will still keep its quarterly patch cycle uh, as it does today. And uh, the, the 643 release, which you know was an on-premise release, will now be that 18B release. That'll be coming uh, after May sometime for customers. And once they get to that 18 release, uh, we'll start uh, upgrading existing customers on the C release, so the August time frame. And then those quarterlies that they get. So once you get onto that 18 A B, that, I'm sorry B C D, um, and then into 19, those quarterlies will not only contain security fixes, but they'll also and, and bug fixes. They'll also contain enhancements. So once we get there, we're going to get into a cadence or a cycle of every quarter putting enhancements. Now some quarters will be kind of bigger ones, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll drop a nice, you know, one of our big new product offerings or something, and some quarters will be more enhancements, you know, uh, you know, adding more features to screens or putting some, you know, features, you know, kind of minor to medium size enhancements on. But you'll be able to take them, um, use them if you like them, or if you don't need to use them, you don't have to turn, turn those features on. So that's a kind of a change that we're, that we're kind of gradually working in over the next, uh, over the next year. And then back to on-premise, what our support policy is. Uh, hopefully there's nobody here on 5.5 or 6.0 or even 6.1. I put them up there just in case there is. Uh, but for 6.2, 6.3, 6.4, you see kind of what we're doing from a support approach. And the way that we've done this with on-premise, it's very similar to all of the Oracle on-premise products, is that from the time we release it, we support that family or that, that group of products for five years. So you see all the, the six, six one, six two, six three, and six four. Um, those end of Premier support, that's Premier being how long it can be patched, last five years. And then you can buy extended support for three years. So that's a, if you need to stay on a release for some reason longer than that first column of end, end of Premier, you can buy extended support. The caveat being that for extended support, you uh, need to be on the latest roll-up. We don't uh, patch all the old, all the old roll-ups. So that's of particular import for 6.4. So now with 6.4, the support date is 2020. That's how long you'll, you'll be able to get patched. But the, uh, the each of the roll-ups has uh, only, only patching until a certain amount of time. And it's 643 that you have to get to to be on extended support. So if you want to be using 64 beyond 2020, you want to get to 643. It's good. Okay. And for cloud, we don't have to worry about any of this because we're upgrading people all the time. We don't have to talk about that. We don't have to do any of this. So all this, you know, keeping track of multiple releases, patching multiple releases, all of that, going backwards, uh, you know, to go back to a 6.2 and provide a patch, we don't have to do any of that. Because in the cloud, we only, we patch the, we're only patching really two releases at any one time because we're keeping our customers current. So you see kind of what's going on, what goes on currently. We, none of the 6.3, we don't patch it anymore because there's nobody on it in the cloud. 6.4.1, we're down to about, because we're doing the upgrades, we're doing the upgrades uh, through the end of December, we only have a handful of customers left on 641. So there's some patching that goes on, but it will soon, it'll go away by the end of this year. And 642, that's, that's what everybody's on, that's what we're patching. That's what we're providing quarterlies on, or what we call weekly patches. And once we get to the 18s, the BCDs and the 19s, we will just be patching those until the next ones until, until the next one's available. Okay, so that's kind of a different approach, and you know, kind of how we're going to more of a cloud cloud first strategy. 
So with our on-premise roadmap, um, there's a lot of people asking what is the next on-premise major release, because all I've talked about so far is the next roll-up, which is 643. So for on-premise, um, it I can tell you it won't be part of the 6.4 family. We're not having any more 6.4 roll-ups. So the next thing we're going to release on-premise will be a major release. And it will likely, and usually based on our what we've done in the past and, and uh, kind of how our client base is kind of shifting to cloud, um, it will probably be about two plus years after we release 6.4.3 uh, before we have another on-premise release and it'll be a major release. We haven't given it a name or a number yet, uh, and so we don't know if it's 657019, whatever. We're, we're just, yeah, we're leaving that open for now because I don't think anybody really cares what it's named. Uh, but that, that time frame would be roughly the time frame. So you can see we're going to be having these regular cloud releases, but for on-premise, uh, we're going to kind of collect up any features we do and put them into uh, you know, kind of a larger on-premise release. And the content will come from those cloud releases. So it will come to things that uh, could be implemented on-premise. That's what will be put into an on-premise release. Um, so there won't be any, what you won't see in, a, in an on-premise release is features specific to an on-premise. So integrating directly to an on-premise product, uh, we won't be doing any of those kind of very specific on-premise features. Uh, but there's still a lot of features that we will be doing that you know, we deliver in cloud that will come in, in on-premise. And we won't be, if there's some feature that requires cloud, uh, obviously that won't come on-premises either. Um, and we haven't set a roll-up or, or a patching policy yet, but that's, that's kind of <clears throat> what our plan is. So it's, it, it's really just you know, the main message here is the next thing that's coming is a major release. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a roll-up. And for the cloud, it's much different. Uh, we will be putting uh, 18B on the cloud, and, which will essentially be 643 with a few more fixes. Um, and we're going to implement that first for new customers. That's generally our MO, put it out there, uh, deploy it with new customers, and then we schedule our customers to upgrade. So 18C will be upgrading our customers to that. Um, then we'll have 18D be security fixes, 19 will be more features and functions and new enhancements, and so on and so forth. So you see every quarter we're going to be dropping new features, new fixes, and so on. A um, couple other points, again, for people that either uh, are on the cloud or have looked into it. Disaster recovery, which is that feature to um, you know, have, a, have your database and, and environment in a separate data center for in case of disaster, that's available today. That was not available uh, earlier this year. Uh, we had more of a backup strategy for disaster recovery. Now it's a full uh, duplicate environment in, a, in another data center, so very, very good feature. And scalability, which is a feature to uh, allow multiple application servers in, in an environment is a feature we have on premise. We haven't implemented in cloud because, frankly, we haven't needed it. Our, our environment is in the cloud is very robust without it. But uh, we do recognize there are some use cases, some environments, some volume that would that would warrant uh, a scalable solution. So we are implementing that it, on top of 642. It's just not available yet. And then the last bullet point I have here, which is something you cannot do today on premise. We don't. We don't have it in cloud either. Is we're, we're going for a um, in the cloud. We're going to implement a kind of near zero downtime patching and upgrade approach, which means that to, to apply either a single patch or to apply a quarterly patch with a bunch of upgrades, uh, you won't have to take any downtime. Or if the down, or if you do, it'll be more of a bounce kind of downtime, something in, in the order of like five or ten minutes to recycle a server. And that, uh, and that's the same will apply for an upgrade as well. So when we upgrade it to a, even a larger release, um, you won't have to take any downtime to do that. And that's a feature we're working on in that kind of R18, R19 platform. We've delivered some of that in 
that 643 or R18 uh, release, uh, we're going to be delivering more throughout the year so that we can get to that point. I expect by the time all of our customers get onto uh, the 19 release, they'll be in that mode uh, where they, uh, in order to get the next release, they won't have to take any downtime. Okay, so that's the releases. Was there any questions on that? I don't have time at the end for questions, hopefully, but I can stop if that wasn't clear. Okay, so let's get, get into a couple of features. Um, so these are things that are available, as I, as I said in the beginning, available today in 6.4.2 uh, that, that you, may have, you may not have seen yet. So shipment groups, they've been in the system for a long time. They've been in the system since the 5.5 days, I believe. And the shipment groups uh, started out as just kind of a, 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 a collector. Uh, but we've added, uh, thanks to uh, working very closely with our friends at APL and some other customers who, who use this extensively, we've added a lot of capabilities to shipment groups. And we've done it over the years. So we've done it you know, in 6.1 six, and, we, and we added more in 6.3, added a lot more in 6.4 and, and, uh, and kind of really made it to the point in 6.4.2 where it's, where it's a pretty substantial object in our system. Whereas it used to be just a kind of collector of, of shipments, now it has its own life and its own set of capabilities. So we've added event tracking, matching, uh, more grouping logic so you can group different things uh, easier with a, with a shipment group. So, and you can see kind of some of the, the actions and menu functions that are associated with shipment groups. So a very powerful object now and, um, and it's flexible. So people, uh, we see people using it for to have that import-export view, uh, more of the traditional one we see in the U.S. is an LTL trailer build, so taking a bunch of LTLs and building them into a trailer. Um, but we also see it used as BOLs, um, you know, just sets of shipments, consignments. Uh, just it's a very flexible object. So if you haven't used it or you have need for for doing any of those things, those business scenarios, you should take a look at it. Um, another feature that we've spent a lot of time on uh, and, and have gotten uh, to the point, I think, that fairly powerful capabilities under our fleet, uh, fleet management, is our uh, fleet-aware bulk plan, where we can do bulk planning uh, that's more uh, in line with having a fleet. So building shipments that <coughs> match the fleet better. And we do that through uh, what are called work assignments. So you can see kind of our, out of our bulk plan, we end up with something called a, a work assignment, which is a collection of shipments that go together. Now, they don't necessarily have to go to one driver, but that's the idea. If you, if you have drivers, you can now take that work assignment and build it and just associate it with a driver. So if you are using our fleet or you're interested in using our fleet, I would definitely take a look at this um, and look at some of the things that we've done with, with work assignments that are becoming more of a, they're also becoming more of a real object in our system where um, you, know, you can use them as kind of that, that collection of work. You know, whereas the shipment, could be a, the shipment group could be a, a collection of a lot of different things. The work assignment was really supposed to be a collection of work that you can assign to a resource of some kind, like a drive. Um, in the GTM world, for those of you uh, using GTM, we've also done a major effort in customs management, uh, whereas we used to have these things called custom shipments, we've evolved that to something called the, the customs the declaration. Uh, one, because uh, it's a more common term. People know what you know, the declaration is, it's more for filing, um, and, and it's a more typical term. You know, they, they weren't really familiar with our custom shipment term. Uh, but it's, much, it's also much more flexible in that we uh, can now get down to the transaction line level in creating a, um, uh, a declaration, whereas we couldn't do that before. Um, and we have a whole new connectivity architecture for customs um, that, that makes it a lot more powerful and, and capable and uh, new messaging objects. So, so we can capture all the communications associated with, with the declaration. So I would definitely uh, 
yeah. and for those of you using it, recommend you, you take a look at this. And you know, obviously you, you will be, if you were using custom shipping, you will now be using declarations. But there's a lot more power behind it now. On the planning side, so this jumping back into the OTM side, uh, we've done a lot of work on just enhancing our planning engine as we do with each release. Um, the first one is in a way of uh, performance and the you know, kind of group uh, failure, but they're, they're into performance, but uh, seems weird to say we fail right away. But some people, when they're running a bulk plan, uh, they can't connect to their external rating engines and they don't realize that until they run through you know, a multi-hour long bulk plan and realize, wow, it didn't, didn't get any rates for me. So now we have the capability to fail right away so that if you just kick off a big bulk plan and it can't con connect to your rating engine, it'll, it'll fail. You'll, you'll be able to start it again, fix the problem with your external rating engine. Um, we've done a lot of work around multi-stop and sequencing, um, both performance-wise and um, capability-wise. And we're, we're moving more towards, and we're, we're not 100% of the way there, but we're moving more towards higher numbers of stops to be able to handle that. So there's, there's a lot of use cases we see um, where people are trying to do 20, 30 stop routes. Um, so we want to get the bulk plan engine a little more capable there to do that. Um, we've done some work with voyages um, to do composite voyages, which is, you know, I, I kind of view that as more like a multi-stop. In, in the ocean, uh, but but it's more you know, kind of tying in multiple voyages. Um, we've enabled some uh, POL, POD capabilities with RIQ, which wasn't there before. And then we have a lot of, I, I titled them miscellaneous, but they're uh, 3D load building. We've done a lot of work around there, a new algorithm called a scoring algorithm that, that gets better results than, than your typical 3D uh, load building. It, it um, is able to kind of get that extra you know, two percent squeeze, five percent squeeze, whatever space you need to, to fit in there with it using a scoring. We have some better cutoff capabilities, and um, we have uh, we've done some work around bulk shipping uh, just to make the logic a little better for. It. And that's not bulk planning; that's actually shipping bulk material. You know, some some better capabilities there. Um, so that's the kind of back end. Uh, propeller head stuff on, on uh, algorithms. Uh, for the front end stuff, for those of you that are not on 642, uh, we have a whole new uh, interaction design or a whole new UX design. So uh, you've probably seen it if you've been at uh, any of these conferences in the past, uh, just what our, our new UX is, is looking like. But essentially it's, it's more of a, uh, you know, we have the top bar uh, way to um, navigate and run through the system, but it's a, it's a more tablet friendly, a more uh, cell phone friendly icon based uh, capabilities with a big bar across the top to do navigation. It has some favorites capabilities. Uh, so this was, this is something that uh, we wanted to introduce in a major release in 6.4 and um, for several reasons we decided to wait until some things were more fully baked. I guess you'd call it, or you know, kind of more capable, so that we had a full, rather than kind of push partial in there, we, we waited until we had some full. So it really wasn't introduced fully until 6.4.2. So now when you get to 6.4.2, you will automatically get this, and all of your uh, configurations, not customizations, but configurations, so if you've done screen sets or menus, they'll all translate into this. Okay, so we, we can, you know, uh, custom menus. So it's something again worth looking at. I mean, you, you, there's no choice in there. There's no option to go back to the old menu style or anything. It's the new menu style, um, and we're going to be advancing that. We've already done a lot of get, a lot of things in 6.4.3, and with all the other releases we'll be doing, you'll see more UX enhancements every release. Speaking of UX, another area that we're doing heavy investment in is uh, transportation workbench. So that is uh, something that started as a kind of fleet workbench where we used it for dispatching. And we evolved it into a, uh, a capability you can do with any object in our system. So we introduced this in the 6.4 uh, 
time frame. Prior to this, we had something called advanced layouts. Uh, advanced layouts uh, does not have the flexibility or configuration that Workbench does. So we will eventually be retiring the advanced layouts and replacing it with Workbench. We are at the point of 643, I believe we are kind of parallel with the capabilities. Uh, we have a lot more capabilities, I mean parallel with advanced layouts, but we have a lot more capabilities in, in Workbench. Uh, but Workbench allows you that kind of, uh, the, the driver for it was uh, our customers saying to us, we don't want to, when we're in OTM, we, we launch a bunch of windows and we, we end up with you know, 20 windows on our system. We want to you know, kind of sit inside a cockpit and do all of our work. And that's what this is, uh, that's what Workbench is about, is being able to create all your panels, be able to work, uh, do your work kind of within, without leaving the screen. Am I moving around too much, is that? I'm sorry. Uh, so some of the features uh, that, we, that we've been able in 642, uh, Workbench, we've enabled a lot more options. So if you've used it in 641, it's a lot more capabilities in 642. Uh, you can copy layouts. Uh, there's no limits on the number of layouts you can have. There used to be limits. Uh, in the finders area, uh, you'll find um, the, the if, if you like, the FLVN, the FLVN is gone, and we, we have a more standard kind of finder, a more modern user interface to our finders and results, and we've done a lot more work around favorites, and favorites uh, uh, work a lot better. It's always been in the system, but now we've, we've made it work a lot better, and it's always on. Um, and you can edit the menus now. That was something when we first released 642, it wasn't there. But we've, uh, there's some patches you can get to, to do menu editing uh, on that springboard so you can change uh, right on the springboard the menu. Uh, from a technology standpoint, um, this, this is really uh, propeller head stuff, but uh, there's, I just picked out like four things we've done in 642 that, that we have, but one of them is file content analysis. It's somewhat of a security feature, but it, you know, it's a capability feature in that you can limit what files you allow people to upload because you have this upload capability inside of OTM. Um, we we uh, limit the files for you. If you're on-premise, you can go in and edit that and limit it even further or change it, uh, but it does allow you to only you know, allow them if you want to. Just load it up CSV, that's the only file I'll let you load. Um, most people want XSL, so they let that, but uh, you can limit the, number, the, the types of files you load. Uh, we also have something called a wallet, which is also a security feature. It, it allows you to take all of the uh, passwords that you have in the system and put them into this external thing called the wallet, so it's not stored in the database. So if you do like database copies and moving things around, you're not uh, worried about passwords being copied around. Um, and this one's more of uh, for the consultants in the room and, and people that, that implement the, the system um, and, and more the advanced users. Um, you can do an explain plan now within our uh, SQL, uh, SQL servlet um, <coughs> to test your SQL that you write. So uh, for those of you who don't know, our agents allow you to uh, call SQL so you can, our agents allow you to call a bunch of functions that we write, but they also allow you to call SQL that you write. Um, now you have the capability to test the performance of that SQL right within our system. So you can write the SQL and test it and do an actual explain plan, which is a, a database feature that'll tell you how that SQL runs and, and let you tune it right there on our front end of the system. And then uh, we, also, we now have a new archive uh, schema, new archive approach. Uh, I spoke about this, I believe, at some SIGs last year or the year before. Um, this is a, an, an archive approach that allows you to, uh, it's better because one, it, it compresses the data and it'll keep, um, in, in our cloud, we, we set the number to 10 years, so it keeps 10 years of archive and it compresses it. Um, and, but it also allows you to get access to that archive. We've, allowed it. We've enabled a capability in the system so that you can change a user role to an archive role and you can look at those old archives 
and look up old data uh, right within the system and, and do a report to print out like an old invoice if, if there's like a discrepancy or so on. Um, some more, yeah, again, the miscellaneous features, just because I don't know where to group them, just a group of features that, uh, again, I picked out a few that are coming in 6.4.2, or that are in 6.4.2. Um, the online booking and tendering screen, we've added more features to. Everybody uses that. Uh, there's always enhancements for that. We've done a number of things there. Uh, we've added agent action to copy flex fields. Um, this is something uh, I, I put up there, you know, keep the suggestions coming. We want to enable more actions in our agents so you don't have to write SQL. And what we found talking to our customers and consultants, the most common SQL they're writing is to copy things around. So we've had, we now have agents that can do that for you. So you, you don't have to write SQL to do that. Um, we've, now, we've allowed accessorial sequencing. Seems like, uh, I, I hesitate to call this an enhancement, uh, but it, it allows you to sequence, uh, allows you to put a number on the accessorial. So if you have this order that you want the accessorial to be rated in, you know, one, two, three, four, five, you can now put that order and it'll adhere to that. I think prior to us doing this, it just did it alphabetically or maybe at the time whenever to put it into the database. Um, and then uh, we've added full layer logic. There's a, there's a picture of that on the, on the right. So if you wanted to, uh, control, you didn't want to have uh, pallets that, that weren't even on the top, yet you have the capability to now set that up so that when we gen that when we build pallets, we'll be able to build them that way as well. Okay, so that's some 642 stuff that's out there today. Um, hopefully uh, something that you can use, and so uh, useful features uh, for, that um, that are in 6.4.2. So, in, I just have a couple of things that are in uh, 6.4.3 that we're delivering. And this is an important one uh, to me because I am usually the escalation point uh, for, for uh, uh, performance type things. But uh, a typical problem we see in implementations is that order management systems have sales orders or purchasing system have POs. And those sales orders, those POs, have lots of lines. And transportation doesn't care about those lines. It doesn't care that you're shipping a pencil or a pen or any of those. It just, transportation just cares that it's freight all kinds or it's hazardous or you know, something like that. So we don't want that and because that, that extra uh, line causes clutter, causes performance problems. So the implementation solutions for that uh, which, which we like, one is to aggregate them up. So that as you, as you take the orders out of an order management system, you classify them and you roll them up into a freight all kinds or you roll them up into hazardous. Um, and, and you do that in your integration layer. Um, that's one option. Um, another option is you can load them into an order base. An order base in our system is a purchase order. It is a sales order. That's the purpose of an order base. Uh, a lot of people don't use order bases, they just go right to releases, but that's what an order base is for. Um, some people just leave them out. That's a good solution, just send it up at the summary level. Um, if you don't need it, you don't have any, if you're shipping all the same stuff anyway from a transportation, leave it out. We don't need it or want it anyway. But the typical uh, solution is to dump them all into OTM because that's what the easiest thing to do. <laughs> And then just log an SR for, for bulk plant performance. So I don't like that one because that SR usually comes to me. So, um, so what we're doing, we're making it easier because this, this option back here, option number B, um, is a good option, but it, it, there's, there's no easy way to get that to an order release. There's no, there's no uh, flexible way. So what we're doing, is we're enhancing that option B, and we're adding what we call this roll-up logic uh, to order base lines. So that we'll have this whole new category um, uh, using packaged items. We'll be able to do this in the order configuration screen, and you'll be able to smart link between order releases, order bases. 
So, so what this means is you, you can you can model your you can have an order uh, a sales order or a purchase order come into OTM, but it's coming into OTM as a base and all the lines associated with it, and then we will roll up we will create the order we already have the ability to create an order release from an order base but now we're now we're going to have this ability to roll up these lines so you can say you know these 100 lines roll up into this order release line and these 200 lines roll up into this other order release line so you can now instead of throwing 300 order release lines into our bulk plan and so on we're only going to get two lines so it's a very, very useful, very powerful feature that, that will be coming. And we've already had, uh, I brought this up at our, um, our US-based SIG, and we've already had enhancement requests, even though we haven't released it yet, we've already had enhancement requests on being able to allocate down to back to the order baselines. Uh, so an allocation enhancement request. So that's something we're, uh, we've already looked at uh, incorporating in. So the other feature, this is an eye chart, so don't, don't expect to read it. I didn't intend for you to read all that, that detail that's in there, but the, uh, another feature that we're, we're adding in 643 is diagnostics. Um, and this is the number one requested enhancement from our, uh, our SIG and our general kind of customer base in general is to be able to understand what's happening in bulk plan easier. So be able to know why something planned or why something didn't plan or why something took longer to plan. Um, so we've well, we've had a couple capabilities over the past of you know being able to do more logging and, and uh, summarize logging and so on. Uh, but now we've added this whole diagnostic feature with kind of graphical navigation so you can you know kind of start at the bolt plan, uh, drill down into different parts. So we have this kind of sunburst view that allows you to <coughs> Uh, navigate through a kind of a sunburst approach. We also have a block view, so if you prefer kind of navigating it through a block where you, where you can kind of drill down and see, you know, section at a time. Um, and we also have your typical text view. But the idea here is to be able to go into uh, these screens when, when you're kind of in preferably kind of the implementation stages or the, the early stages when you're where you're understanding your bulk plans and find out what's going on why didn't this order plan and um, that's kind of what some of these screens allow you to do is be able to query on an order uh, filter things down to what you need uh, what you need to see so if you plan on taking 643 I know there's a couple people in the room I already spoke to that are uh, interested in um, jumping on it when it comes out. Uh, and you do do bulk planning regularly. I, I would encourage you to look at this to see if, it, if it's helpful to, to get you to understand what's happening behind the scenes. Okay, so again, just, just kind of two uh, features that, that are uh, uh, coming in 6.4. There's a lot more. Uh, I just picked out two that were kind of of interest to the majority of uh, customers. So in, in uh, wrap up, I have a couple of things. Uh, one is uh, just to remind you about uh, this Oracle support note uh, that provides you to all access to our documentation, um, you know, the latest stuff that's coming out, product features, and so on, but also our transfer of information. So for 642, uh, that, that user interface uh, change that I talked about, big, the big change that we've done, there's a whole uh, transfer of information, so that's, a, that's our narrated PowerPoints. So it's a kind of a learning session you can get onto. Uh, use that MOS note, uh, drill into the transfer of information, and just sit there and we'll, we'll tell you all about our user interface or workbench um, and the work we did under bulk items. All the, these are the kind of top ones that we've done that uh, we added a transfer of information for. Um, and of course, the declaration management, uh, big change there, so we thought we'd add a, a transfer of information as well. Um, there's also uh, one of the uh, <clears throat> big feedback we get from at least uh, from, from usually not at the sessions, but talking to people one-on-one -on -one when we say, you know, uh, have, you, have you looked at this TOI or have you looked at that? A lot of people tell us that 
uh, they work in big companies and they don't have access to my article support. There's only, they're, they're, the, the people that have access to it are a very limited group. You know, it's like their IT team and a couple of people. They're the only people that can get access to articles, my article support, and go in and look at that stuff. So all that stuff we're doing, you know, for some com for some companies, uh, the, the people that work on OTM can't get to them. So there is a docs.oracle.com, which is what all of our cloud customers use uh, to get their information, their, their whole getting started guide from the cloud and so on. But it also has uh, this, this, you know, a lot of documentation just in general about OTM. So if you can't get to Moss and you want a lot of information about OTM, the docs.oracle.com will, will get you that as well. Uh, so it's a good, good place to start. It's not everything that's in the Moss note. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in in my article support, but it, but it's a lot it's a lot of good stuff. So those two places are, are good to look up information. Um, and we also uh, in your bags there is a, uh, a survey form. We uh, we use that survey uh, for driving our product releases for prioritizing. Um, you know, kind of where what we do documentation, what we document, what we do training material on. So please fill it out uh, because we do uh, use that information extensively to drive our product. And we'll have a drawing for a hundred dollar Amazon gift card uh, at the end of, I believe, at the end of this uh, for everyone that's filled out their survey. But please fill it out because it is very, very useful to us. To, um, to get feedback, and um, as I said, we use it every conference. We do this at every conference, and we even have some people in our documentation team who will follow up uh, with with you uh, if you put some, you know, if you put anything on there that, that uh, you want to talk to us about, uh, they'll follow up with you to, to uh, chase that down. So, I have allowed not 10, but nine minutes and 20 seconds for questions, uh, happy to take them. Yes. Is there a plan to move the OPM SaaS data center outside of US? Uh, so the question was, is there a plan to move the, uh, the SaaS data centers outside the US? So currently, our SaaS cloud is available in four data centers, um, two in the US and one in, uh, well, two in the world, one, one is uh, in the UK. So it's Slough in the UK and Amsterdam in New York. Uh, we don't have one in Asia back yet, uh, but there are uh, maybe not uh, 2018 plans, uh, but 2019 plans with um, plans to move OTM to uh, uh, a cloud. Uh, package where we can use any of the data centers because Oracle data centers are all over the place. We have more in Asian factory, more in Europe, and more. So I know that you know a couple of them are. Uh, uh, when, when we get to that kind of more standardized approach, uh, we'll be able to move to some of those data centers. Oracle. So, like I said, maybe not 18, but probably 19, where we'll be able to do that. Is that a um, limiting factor? Probably for the data sovereignty, sometimes for, it, for certain customers, we cannot leave that outside of Australia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so there, there's a, uh, the, the way we mitigated some of that is there, there are some features. Well, first of all, all the, all the transport in the cloud is encrypted. So everything that travels to and from our cloud is HTTPS, so it's all encrypted. Um, we also have features in the uh, cloud itself to encrypt the database. So the database has an encryption feature. Um, so you can encrypt the, the, uh, the data that's at, at rest in the database. And you can even get it to the point where uh, the DBAs can't, the DBAs of Oracle can't look at any content as well. So that usually, that's usually how we deal with that. But, but there are plans to expand our data centers beyond the four. Okay, there's also a series of questions that's posted online. Uh, shall I start on the first one? Okay. <coughs> okay, any new 
existing data centers planned for OTM, especially for APEC market? Yeah, that's the one I just answered. Oh, so that's the same sorry, thing, not, the, not, uh, not in the short term. Does it allow user to change the screen result uh, layout and save it for him or only? As example, change the column sequence. Uh, for for an individual person, is that you saying? Yeah. yeah, I believe that's the case. There, my well, guys there. Yeah. yeah, that's. When when what? Uh, which release is available? I think that might have been in six four two. Yeah. When will OTM 643 be available? Uh, the best date I can give you is uh, weeks to you know, months. But I, I, if, it, if it comes out later than uh, January, I'd be surprised. So you, should, you can probably plan your, pro if you're planning a project, you know, just to be safe, put it at the end of January. Uh, but but it probably come before that. Any enhancement integrating with map engine in shipment planning and adjustments? So uh, we have done a lot of um, work with our mapping vendors uh, around both display and using their data in uh, the engines and in our shipment planning. We still have the same recommendations on uh, when you're doing bulk planning. Uh, just like bulk planning evaluates hundreds of thousands or potentially millions of combinations. And if that's a combination that uh, requires a, a multi-stop and going to a, a map engine to get, get the data, we don't recommend doing that dynamically all the time. We recommend, you know, caching it using a different approach and then using the map for the real the real rate rather than running it inside the engine. And that's just performance reasons. That's not but we have done more work around kind of standardizing, you know, you'll probably see that in some of the releases of the six four three especially, uh, trying to standardize between here maps and ALK maps and some of those other things. All right, thank you. Is fleet aware fault plan also going to consider equipment and PU, PUs? Currently it supports only drivers and doesn't consider PUs even driver is married to a PU slash equipment. Uh, so yes, um, it's, it's, it's going to consider it. It's, it's, there's uh, some enhancements we have to do, especially with um, multi-stop, multi-equipment. So you can, you know, when you have that um, uh, multiple, like, pups. Power unit. Power unit. So the power unit. Um, so equipment being the, the trailer, trailer size, and, and the power unit. Um, so definitely uh, in our roadmap, and probably more, not, not in 643, is, uh, or, but, but short term coming, uh, because there's, uh, a lot, a lot of interest in uh, not, not just uh, is really planning down to that level. I mean, our fleet. One of the power, one of the nice things about our fleet is it, is it does go, uh, it does use OTM, and OTM goes down to a detailed level. And so these, these you know, power units and equipment, we want to get down to that level as well, yeah. including to the point of where we can uh, put two pieces of equipment on one shipment uh, and handle the fact that we're going to drop one of them off first and drop the other one off later, come back and pick them up. All those capabilities are things. We're, we're actually working with customers that have those scenarios that we're, we're trying to enable in uh, both our base system and, and fleet. Anything else? Any plans to bring back LCC on the cloud? Uh, yes. Yes, and, and Derek's going to speak about that this afternoon, uh, the details of that, so I won't steal his show. But yes, there are definite plans. Uh, we have, it's one of our top uh, roadmap priorities is to bring that back, and we will bring it back on the cloud, which is a much better fit. Uh, for those of you who don't know LCC, it was logistics 
uh, the command and control center, and it was built to be kind of a, uh, a modeling tool or a uh, capability to do like forecasting and so on, not your day-to-day -day planning, but raise it up a level. Uh, but it was built as an on-premise product and a pretty heavy footprint um, where it you know, required exadata and so on. So it didn't, didn't sell because of that footprint, because the footprint was heavy. So we took it off the market and we're retooling it to work on the cloud. Um, so you'll see, uh, you know, Derek's going to speak about that same thing. Next question, visual and manual resequencing of ship units in 3D load config, will this be possible? Uh, in the three, so this would be in the, in the actual 3D uh, the, there are some, uh, I think it was 642, There's, we, we did a lot of, uh, we did a big change to the visuals on 3D load building. We, we switched to a new tool that allows us more capabilities so that you can spin it and twist it and show different parts of it very easily. Um, uh, if, if you're interested, we should uh, arrange a demo on what that does. But I don't know that it allows you to take individual boxes and, and move them around. Uh, I don't think we're there yet, uh, but it was definitely something we want to get to. Thus, 18S3 OCM version will use 18C Oracle DBA? Uh, so uh, we will eventually use the uh, that's my, my time. Uh, the, the version we're going to use to start with is going to be uh, the same version we were in, which is the 12 version. Um, but we will be, but so it won't be with 18C that we introduced the 18 database version, but uh, probably shortly thereafter, but not with the, not with the first launch. Was that it? <laughs> In Warbench, instead of drag and drop to giant Gantt car chart, is it possible to perform drag and drop to driver object? Um, yes, I believe it is. Um, I think it, 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 uh, there's, there's all of those capabilities have to be enabled. In general, uh, we support drag and drop across the objects, but we have to enable uh, the, the code behind it to make it work with that object but I believe that one is supported. If you want to know more about OTM diagnostics, see the OTM 6 seminar from earlier this year. Okay, yes. this is just the information. Yeah, that's right. We did a, uh, at the SIG last year, a bunch of our developers did a session on uh, the diagnostics. So, yeah, that's a good point. How is it? How, can, how it can be possible to plan an order movement into multiple legs using the bulk plan? Uh, I don't understand the question. It's a more, more yeah. consulting question, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, because I would think you'd, you'd be able to do that, but, but I, maybe it's the terminology. I mean, an order movement is a... Uh, for the an order movement is when you take a an itinerary, which has you know, four legs, and you take an order release, and, and you'll create an order movement for each of those legs. So I don't understand why we would be moving it moving it onto multiple because the movement itself is is for just that leg. Um, so um, if anybody wants to talk to me, maybe explain it to me and further, we can talk at a break. With four releases every year, wouldn't there be significantly higher effort on customer side for testing? That, that's a really good question. Um, so we do this today already. We do these uh, quarterly patches. And those are the quarterly patches that you know, I tell people, yeah, you, should do a, you should do a test just to you know, do kind of a smoke test or a, regress, a quick regression test to make sure everything works, but we document everything that we change. And I tell people, you know, read it and you know, do some testing. And as I said, we've had very few regression issues. I can count them. You know, we have, we have you know, almost 300 customers on our cloud, and I can count them on, on you know, one hand 
how many regression issues we've had with quarterly passes. So what we're doing with these, with the new quarterlies where we're adding enhancements, we're going to deliver them the same way. And we're going to deliver them so that these enhancements won't automatically turn on. Uh, when you use them, you have to turn them on. So your system should work exactly the same way, pre-patch versus post-patch, or what we call, it's actually called an update, not a patch, but pre-update versus post-update. So yes, you still have to test, but you have to test anyway with the quarterly. I, I, would, I would be, it's probably more likely that a, that a bug fix would change behavior than, than an enhancement request. Because a bug fix, you might be counting on the buggy behavior, uh, which you shouldn't be, but it, it can happen. For OTM cloud version, if the system patches, bug fixes, update is done automatically, will it affect the customization done on the current version? If yes, any suggestion from the OTM development team? So it won't affect configuration because configuration is are things that we test. So anything that you can do standard through our screens and configure, yes. Customization you cannot do in the cloud, inside of our cloud. So we, it won't affect that. If you do a customization, it has to be outside the cloud. We have a, something called a PaaS service, and that's platform as a service. And you can develop custom screens and have them link into our system so it looks like it's a customization that's on the same cloud as ours um, and it handles single sign-on so you can have like custom screens tied right into OTM and if you and the way you develop that is to develop it uh, using our APIs and our APIs are backward compatible so even those customizations won't break uh, with, a, with an update that happens because if you use our APIs, now you, you don't have any option not to because you can't get to the database, you can't go directly to the database in the cloud, you have to go through our APIs. So if you develop that, and it's a much better way to develop a customization rather than you know, like building it inside the database or building it directly reading the database, it's better to use our APIs because then they're, your, your customizations are upgrade proof. Okay, we have last three questions. Shall we finish with this question? We'll go on for our break. Okay, any plan to integrate with Vessel or Flight Schedule NG? Uh, we, we definitely have, <coughs> have the request and we have uh, talked to uh, partners in that area. Um, we do, uh, it's done today, so it's, it's something that, that is done in the field today, but it's done as, a, as an effort um, with your consulting partners to help you do that. Um, what we will likely do is just make it easier to do that. I don't think we would ever you know, just hardwire to one, uh, one particular vendor, but we would make it uh, easier to uh, tie in multiple vendors or create, like we've done with our rating engine, our external rating engine, like we've done with external service, we create a much more tailored uh, service to vessel schedule so that we can uh, make it easier to do in the field. Good. Is there a standard approach to apply daily rates to shipments? I'm not sure I follow that. Uh, maybe I should, whoever asked that, I should talk to them what, what that means, applying daily rates. But uh, if it's, uh, I, don't know, I don't know, not following the question. Actual sequencing stops. Can it be taken into consideration for bulk plan? So, we have something, if, if you're talking about a forced sequence, we have something already called a ground schedule uh, that, that you can give us as, you know, this is a milk run, it always follows this route. And uh, we have a lot of people that use those today, so it's, it's a fixed, fixed sequence. Uh, <coughs> And you can do a bunch of things to specify in our planning engine, you know, which, which this location always has to come first or this one always has to come last. Uh, so if that's the, the need, then I think we have capabilities there. If it's more detailed, then you know, again, we can talk and uh, see if there's something else we can do. I think that's it. Let's give a round of applause for Julian. Thank you, Mary.